Hi everyone and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Black Canvas. I hope you're all doing really well. So today the ladies are joining me to talk about vaccinations, the NHS, organ donations, all that good stuff. So guys, I hope you're going to enjoy this one because it's a very important topic. We're also going to be joined by a doctor who will be giving us some very, very important gems. So as always, make sure you use the hashtag Black Canvas TV. You know, this is just a conversation that I feel like doesn't really happen in the black community. Um, I think with vaccinations and organ donation and stuff like that, I think we don't really talk about it because it's, we almost don't do it. Well, organ donation, I know for me, that's just something that has never crossed my mind that I would do. But I think I, I want to touch on, before we get to that, I want to touch on vaccinations and um, the distrust of the NHS. I think um, they all kind of tie in with each other and let's just start off with and just sort of say like what is everyone's views on like vaccinations are we vaccinated do you vaccinate your kids you know that kind of thing i'm vaccinated and yeah my son's vaccinated fully, fully vaccinated. vaccinated yeah i mean there was a couple that we waited a little while yeah why um, because i i'm for vaccination but i want to read all the information anyway mm. so um the bcg and MMR. Mm -hmm. MMR we did on time, but BCG we waited about six, seven months because okay. um, I want no one to come for me from the NHS, but they were giving, at, for a while, the BCG vaccination had run out. Yes, and they I were remember giving that. out yeah. expired vaccinations. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is and I said, what? Mm -hmm. Expired? Yeah, they were giving yeah, they expired vaccinations. Yeah. And they were saying, oh no, it's fine until so and so. Mm -hmm. And it was like, no, if it was fine, it wouldn't have that expiration date. Mm -hmm. So it's not fine. Mm -hmm. So That's I wasn't happy to do it. And I remember when um, me and my husband went in with our son um, to do it, mm -hmm. and we said, can we have some information about the fact that it's expired? Have you guys found another source? Are they okay? And she was looking at me like, what kind of questions are you asking? So she said, I'm going to get the doctor. The doctor came in, gave me the same information I found online. I said, no, no, I've read that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what's going on with? And she looked at me like, who, who, who are you to be asking? So I was like, do you know what? We're not doing it. And they said, are you? and I said, no, don't want to do it. I think and so fair. we left. Yeah, I mean, and that's, then I think that's we fair. waited about six months yeah. when they said they'd got some that were not. They were from a different country, but it was all like kosher. Then we we're like, okay, fine, we'll do it because we will travel to Ghana. So we do want him to have yeah. a BCG vaccination. Yeah. But you not inject my summer now expired no way i think wow. that's fair that's not you being against vaccination no. that's just you wanting just, your mm, child yeah. to take the correct yeah. vaccination yeah yeah yeah, the yeah. Time. fair so. enough um so common misconceptions around um organ donation and vaccination so vaccinations firstly direct links to things like autism um, so most prevalently the MMR, um, which was a really poorly done study, it only involved around 12 participants. Um, some of the figures were actually made up, um, but by the time that the report came out, the press got hold of it, the hysteria had already happened. Um, so it you know, caused a huge plummet in the amount of vaccination that were happening. Um, organ donation, I think there's a lot of them. Um, potentially, you know, thinking that your organs don't belong to you, that you've got no choice in whether you can donate um, and what I've done with those organs. There's a lot of mistrust around that. Anyone against vaccinations? Yes. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have two children. Mm -hmm. um, my first child is partially vaccinated um, and my second child, no vaccinations, not even vitamin K, no vaccinations at all. So um, let's just know who, like, the okay. age is. So, so first... my daughter is um, 11 and a half and my son is one and a half. Why did you decide not to, because with your first child you did? Partially. And, well, partially. So what um, changed? I think I had my first child um, and, you know, you kind of get your schedule when you're supposed to vaccinate and you kind of, for me, I just followed along. I just did what I was Told. supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I didn't really question it until she had a bad reaction to a vaccination. Which um, one? Do you remember what specifically Oh, to be honest had? with you, I don't remember yeah. which one it was, um, because a lot of them are combined as well. So sometimes there's three in one, five in one. Mm -hmm. um, I remember she got, she was a bit sick, you know, she became quite sick. And the reaction for me was just enough for me to kind of pull back. Um, and then it just, I, I wasn't happy about it. Um, and as, as everyone knows, when you have vaccinations, most children do get a fever and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, with my second child, I was a lot older, I was more mature, um, I did more research, I kind of, you know, did more reading and I felt like I had more views on it. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to vaccinate at all. Before I had my son, I was like, no, 
Andy. Mm. And then when I, he didn't have the vitamin, nothing at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and then later down, when did I start them? I think after one, mm -hmm. I was like researching certain things because my concern was with the ingredients mm -hmm. and what is target, targeting and how. Mm -hmm. Because there had been studies before that said that it could have a psychological impact, it can um, impair development and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, and also, I didn't understand how he would be a risk to other children. Yeah. Like, I'm still on the fence with that. Like, understanding how that is possible. If, if everybody, if I speak, okay, coughing. Yeah. Don't worry, yeah, you speak. will speak. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> even, no, seriously, if everybody is vaccinated, and I might be speaking ignorantly, you but this is my thinking. If yeah. everybody is vaccinated in the school or the nursery, yeah. how then does a child that's not being vaccinated, vaccinated and is not ill it's affect the yeah. other? No, I'm, I'm literally okay. this is my thinking. Immunity. Affect the other children. Well, Right. Um, and I know that lately, so my son's had MMR now because mm -hmm. of the measles outbreak that's yep. happening. I have colleagues that caught measles as well, and that concerned me. And I thought, you know what, do a bit more research. Look at the um, research that's been debunked by the medical um, body um, organisation. And I do it that way. So it's like he's partially vaccinated because I understand now how measles works and the risks. To it, especially in my area as well. In Kent, there's been a lot of outbreaks. So, for instance, something like measles is very, very contagious. You need to be sitting next to someone on the bus to catch it. Um, and if you don't have the amount of numbers that are vaccinated against measles, if you have one or two people starting to pop up and gathering the disease, then it becomes an epidemic and you get these breakouts happening. I guess kind of what I'm hearing from you guys is that because I feel like it's not as if like vaccination, I mean, if you disagree, let me know. It's not that vaccinations are inherently wrong. It's the information is not enough for you to feel like it's safe enough to do it partially mm. partially okay um i feel like i come from, i come from a place of privilege because i have family members that are doctors and nurses like mum's a nurse my sister um is in the medical industry as well so and she studied vaccination so mm. i feel like I'm, I'm coming from a place of privilege i'm able to ask people um so i get it so if because i'm not going to do something that i'm not clear about especially where it comes to my child mm. Me, I'm the kind of person that I, my leg needs to be hanging, hanging off for me to go to the doctor. Like, I'm, yeah. I, I, I will self-medicate, I will ignore the pain. Yeah. But with Ava, I'm very much like, I need to know what you're putting what in your body, is. I need yeah. to know. Um, so I had that, I could ask my mum, I could ask my sister. Um, so you said you partially agree with what I said about it being a lack of yeah. information, or, do, or you believe that vaccinations are inherently harmful. I'm against that vaccinations. I wasn't vaccinated as a child. However, due to the nature of my job, I've had to take certain precautions just in order to safeguard mm. uh, because the fact that I work with children. But then I've had to put like my moral comforts aside, like how I feel, mm. I've had to put that aside because of the nature of my job. However, my standpoint is still the same. When I have children, I don't plan to vaccinate my kids. My brother was not vaccinated. Uh, like I said, I wasn't vaccinated. Um, for me, Personally, I just don't believe in putting things in your body that shouldn't be there. I've just always felt like that's not something that I'm for. Um, there are no, for me, there are no studies that show that vaccinations work. What Tiffany said, like, if, if vaccinations work, then those children that aren't vaccinated shouldn't be a threat to those that are. I think it's important to have a discussion based on educated decisions um, and informed decisions. Um, I think people often think it's a personal choice with vaccines, and it is a personal choice for you and your child, but it's also a public interest choice. So if you're making a decision about your child and not vaccinating, then you have to be aware that you're also making the choice that you could be potentially putting another child or community at risk. Be careful I think saying that because it's, a stra it's the strain of the whatever ailment, whatever disease or illness that child has. So there may be a case of, I don't, just like you know how you can have a like, little cough, mm. I'm just using this as an example, yeah, of course. but just to make, so people understand what I'm trying to say you can have a little cough but then you could have a really bad cold but then you could have a fever then you can have the flu do you know what I mean mm. so it's a strain so pe when people say if you're vaccinated why do you care it's actually no if you have it depends on the strain of measles that your child has maybe yeah, I was that vaccination care, but like I said I just feel like if vaccinations work and they protect you from that virus or illness it's not entirely mm. it won't entirely it's, it's, that's the so how so how I was <laughs> How is it explained to me about the ones that I've given my son how it works is that it will give the, the strain is in the vaccination. Mm -hmm. It affects, infects the body mm -hmm. and then the body builds up antibodies so it recognises the it. disease yeah. and it gives you a better chance next time. So vaccination is important. It's almost like giving your immune system a training course in how to deal with the disease that you're battling against. 
Um, so you usually give an inactivated version of the vaccine um, and that gives your immune system a chance to get to know what that uh, disease looks like so that if it comes into contact with it then it can respond appropriately and so you don't come down with the symptoms and the consequences. Um, but the important thing is that they only work um, if you create something called herd immunity. Um, and that means enough people need to be vaccinated so that those who are unvaccinated don't get unwell. Um, but that needs to be kind of 90 to 95 percent in terms of the amount of people that need to have that amount of vaccine going on, otherwise it's just not going to work. So it, I thought that as well, but it's, it's not, it's thing, not yeah. Um, yeah, it's not that you don't have the whole, so people are, can be carrying something and mm. not know and not no, have course, any, like, not be symptomatic. Yeah. So I think that's where they're coming from, but still, then in our time, like coming back from your yeah. side, mm -hmm. then why is it not built in or synthesised in a way that it addresses the, do you know what I mean? The, yeah. It addresses like, the disease. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Like, you know I just mean? prefer home, like I've always been like raised on homeopathic um, alternatives, yeah. so that's another reason why I'm not yeah. for uh, vaccinations. Um, homeopathic medicines, like, okay. um, for exa like prime example is my mum had, has had cancer twice now, um, both times she went for radiation, both times she got more sick than she was when she had cancer, um, the cancer in fact spread. She made the personal choice to come off all medication. Mm -hmm. She completely changed her diet and took homeopathic uh, medicines and she was given the all clear. I, I, I want to move on to, um, do you, is there a strong lack of awareness in the community? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because um, even us now talking about it, it's clear that there are some gaps in our knowledge mm. that we don't actually like understand why if you're vaccinated, you could still be at risk mm. from a child that's not vaccinated. Mm. So. Is, do you feel like the onus is on us to, to have this knowledge and, and find this knowledge or do you think our doctors and our GPs and that kind of thing need to be doing better at? Yeah. Anything you do in yeah. life, is, there's, there's all, there always has to be a balance and that goes with anything. So mm -hmm. especially when it comes to your own health, it's, the onus is not on you alone to do the research. It's for the people that do the research and have it readily available to also provide that information and provide appropriate and accurate information. Mm -hmm. So if I come to you as someone, as a, a lay person, I expect you to give me the information I need and then also to take that information and then do my own research just mm -hmm. so kind of to like top it up. Understandable as well. Understandable, so yeah. speaking lay like, well, well you, because but the, a lot of people in the booklets, you, some people read it, it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, like, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, the onus is, I think the onus is on both parties, yeah, both the parent as well as the, the NHS and NHS professionals mm -hmm. to kind of come yeah. together and provide yeah. and and look at the example I gave with when, about the BCG vaccination. When I went and I said to them, like, you know, I've read about about this can you tell me like has it changed is it still expired and she's looking at me like oh, oh, yeah. i'm gonna get the doctor i don't know mm. yeah because sometimes the, the person that delivers the vaccination probably has doesn't know yeah. yeah they're just it's just a marissa made the point and i'm sure you'll like build on mm -hmm. it but you made the point when we were speaking privately about the kind of like scaremongering and them trying to to you can't get you i think like you know you tell a child don't do that they almost want to do even more and i'm not saying that you get it i mean it's like rather than giving you sitting down and explaining Explaining and talking to you as though you're, um, you know, an intelligent adult. They're kind mm. of like, no, you must do this, otherwise yeah. your kid's gonna die. Mm. So. Yeah. I think. Sorry um, to cut you. I think one of the things as well that I don't like as someone who doesn't want to vaccinate their child. I don't think that anti-vaccinators are given the respect mm, of facts. actually that their opinion counts as something. Valid, yeah. We are not. I'm sorry. We have. I've seen it so many times with so many different professionals um, that my opinion hasn't been respected, mm. and we have to remember that. Um, vaccinations it involves consent so it's optional this country is not compulsory um and if you say that you do not want something i understand that you can be given information and you know if someone can say well if, have you changed your mind that's fine but i don't like this kind of forceful nature of well you need to do this and you have to do that yeah because if yeah. i don't put my signature to that paper you can't do nothing yeah, yeah. and you have to be respected as a parent yeah find yeah. out my reasons why i don't want to yeah. vaccinate yeah. talk to me not tell me that okay well i haven't done a schedule i haven't stuck to the schedule and i'm not you know i'm not a good mom because i'm not doing this mm. it's disrespectful yes you yeah know? No, those yeah. things yeah. i think Especially are parent, I those imagine. things are i mean how do we address the shaming because i think okay so i feel like where for me, I feel like people that choose not to like vaccinate mm -hmm. their children and stuff like that. I think there's two reasons that I kind of identify with. Mm -hmm. One of them is done your research. You've gone like your mum. Mm -hmm. You've done the holistic mm -hmm. route. You found a remedy that, that works for right. you. It's working for your body. And then you have those that you know 
kind of buy into the outlandish conspiracy theories and haven't really done the research, mm. just just have this distrust. Mm -hmm. um, and that to me can be quite harmful. Yep. Yeah, um, that's negligent. So, so how do we address them? Because I feel like you're, you're right, because yeah, you, you are entitled to yeah. your opinion, that's your child. Um, so how do we address the shaming? I was going to say, I think professionally the needs to, because there are, say the, the, the name of the medication again, so homeopathic. Home, 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 there's yeah. there's yeah. actual specialists. Mm. That there's a whole hospital for it. Professional yeah. CTs, that you, they should be referred at least right. so that the um, your record can be satisfied. The thing is though, I think when it comes to this topic, it's such a sensitive point mm. because on both sides of the argument, you've got parents or, pe or guardians, right, that ridiculously love their children yeah. and that kind of parental love is unmatched yeah. so on either side parents believe they're 100% doing the best for their okay. kids right yeah, of course. so to get people to meet in the middle is hard because it's it's not just logic it's emotion your yeah. kids do you know what I mean you could like if you do whatever you want to meet but my babies do you know what exactly. I mean yeah. and so I think part of it is that it seems like um I mean, social media has been a big part of, you know, the rise of the anti-vaxxers, as they want to call mm. it. And the medical professionals have not taken into consideration how much of an effect or how much influence that was going to have. And it almost seems like their reaction is to be, dig their heels in and be like, no, our way is the only way and that's it. Yeah. Mm. Rather than making a collaborative thing. Okay, fine. It's like a case of now you should kind of accept that people, some people don't want to vaccinate their children. Mm. All right. If that's the case and vaccines work on a herd community basis mm. where everyone needs to be vaccinated, so everyone's kind of looking after each other. Mm. If that's not going to work because people don't want to vaccinate how do we bring everyone it's together, together. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and it doesn't work yeah, like that and everyone's going to dump their heels and be like yeah. no you must vaccinate yeah. no I'm not going to vaccinate yeah. we're all there and then people are getting sick yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, and it's like later on that it's like oh because I have a friend a four year old at the time who couldn't get her into school because she hadn't been vaccinated, never mm. been sick, all that stuff. I and now she was, I mean, I, I, she I agree with like, that. I'm not gonna lie, I agree with that. I mean, yeah. but um, she's under, she was under pressure now mm. to figure out what to do. And it's like, had early because she's told them, Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Mm. Along those lines, so there's different points at which they vaccinate. It has she been told, Okay, but this is the information on this, and this is why it's relevant. Okay, this is who you need to talk to because, do you know what I mean? It was just, Okay, you're not vaccinated, a bit of attitude next. Do you know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So because now, when she's four, she's having to deal with, Okay, what do I do? Like, mm. I, mean, do you know I mean? kind of think the onus is yeah. on her, though, in that, in that sense, mm. the owner's on the parent. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going to feel sorry for her that now her daughter's four and she can't get into school. Mm. You had this information, you did have access to this information, you made the decision to vaccinate your child. So they're now telling you not allowed to, your child's not allowed to be and go to that school. That's on you now to make decisions as to what you want to do going forward. Yeah. I wanted to touch on um, what are the symptoms of the distrust. Because I do think there are elements of it that are just not trusting what is going into our bodies, which fair and valid to have those um, mm. those fears. Um, but what are some of the, the symptoms of that? Um, because one of them, I think, most recently was we had um, on WhatsApp this message going around regarding organ donation. Oh, yeah. So, you know, the government have recently introduced, um, you now have to opt out. Oh, not yet. Um, yeah. And there was this message that was going around on Auntie WhatsApp yeah. about um, <laughs> the government are going to own your organs and mm. you have to like, you know, you have to. And I remember getting the message thinking, oh my God, what? What is this? Um, and, and my mum, yeah, and my mum <laughs> forwarded the message. And the thing is, I, I was probably disappointed with my mum because she's a nurse. So I was mm. like, what are you doing? Um, but she forwarded, yeah, to our fam she forwarded it to our family group. And then my sister, who is at uni and she's studying this, she's very passionate about stuff like this. Mm. And then she was like, oh, it was introduced in Spain. And she explained how it's worked there. Um, the government do not own your organs and all that kind of stuff. But the sheer like Fear speed yeah. at which that traveled, like Twitter went insane. Like, like, and pe the yeah. retweets were in the thousands. I'm mm. like, wow, this information is actually quite dangerous. Mm. And I'm like, that is a symptom of mm. distrust that you that like, you feel like the government are out to get us or the NHS want to own our bodies and those kind but of I'm, like I'm I'm unregistered as an organ donor. You're on the register. Yeah. So like, I've, same great, I've, so I've been so I registered on the um I was on the register when I became a blood donor and I've been a blood donor for like yes. I don't know how many years now. Mm. So you have the option as well when you sign up to be a blood donor if you want to be an organ donor. I was like yeah like, mm -hmm. I don't I personally have, have an issue with that like if I pass or something happens to me and my organs can be used for somebody else why would I not do that? Yeah. For me it's very for me personally it's very yeah. black and white in that yeah, sense. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. um, so when that stuff went around I wasn't I didn't kind of didn't buy care. into it or feed into Wait, it. Like do, you that. Know, do you know how many messages I got of that? Like yeah. it was going around. People saying is oh, anyone one like against organ donation. No. I was. No, I is was. anyone no is anyone against having to opt out 
of organ do um, organ donation. No, I don't see why. No, 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 no,
for me, I'm always like sort of straddling the fence because I have family members that work in the NHS, mm. so I see what they have to deal with, and I've seen them yeah. years of study that they has gone into it. it. Like mm. this is an informed opinion. Like they didn't just pick up a book and say this is what you should do. Like they've studied this for mm. years. Like they, a lot of them give up their lives to medicine. Mm. So for me, sometimes I do speak you know, sometimes more favourably to the NHS mm. because I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. I've seen what mum has to go through. Yeah. Um, so I'm sometimes a bit more sympathetic to that yeah. because this is an opinion that has formed over years. Right. Um, and when it comes to things like vaccinations and when it comes to things like finding cures for stuff, mm. and when I see conspiracy theories about certain things, I get it where it comes from, but then I also see the other side. Yeah. Like I've seen Same. years of research. Mm. Mm. And these vaccinations also don't just pop up overnight. Yeah. Like, it is years oh, of, like, research yeah. and development. Yeah. Um, so I think the overarching theme, I think, in terms of, like, all this whole discussion yeah. has to be about being informed about yeah. what you're doing, what, like, what you're eating, what you're watching, like, everything. I think I'm respected as well, like, yeah. said, regardless of your opinion. Like, yeah. you have to, you don't have to agree with what somebody says, but just respect it. Yeah. 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 I'm more inclined to agree, or not agree, I'm more inclined to respect an opinion from someone that is different to mine as if I've seen that like mm. there's research that's gone yeah. into it and mm. you've thought about it mm. and like do you know what I mean like yeah. rather than you just like well like, yeah. they're, like they're just yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's like well like you because you're putting like you could potentially be putting other people at risk yeah. with the decisions that you make whether that's to vaccinate or not to vaccinate um, and then the thing with organ donation like you're a beautifully healthy person and you're deciding not to give your organs and it all happens after you die yeah. so I, I think I think with organ donation that originally I was coming from this spiritual point of view of like my body should stay whole when it goes mm. back in the ground don't you know be cutting it up and but I have a but but, but I can agree. I can but agree. But that. I, can agree. I was very firm. I was like, I don't like the idea of it. But then again, my spirit is going to ascend. Exactly. And I want to be ascension. cremated and let it go to where it needs to go. Yeah. So mm. now, I'm, and especially, I know this, this is this is biased. I'll say it straight. Especially after doing research and finding out that the black community are suffering mm. from donors. Yeah. Um, we are the ones. Yeah. So we need it. So, so I was like, yeah. definitely. So this is this is this yeah. was my gripe with it. So in not in the our group chat um, chat with my other friends, it was in our group chat, and I was going back and forth with one of my mates about it, and they kept on bringing up religion, and it really really irritated me because I was just like, we are doing ourselves a disservice, and I'm sure the way I see religion, um, I think that whatever god you pray to would prefer you to save a life mm. rather than take that heart to heaven or wherever the hell you're going to. Amen. But yeah, <laughs> I'm not even going to go into that. Um, what I was going to say is, I think it's important to know that black people can supply do- blood and organs to everybody, mm-hmm. but black people can't accept organs from, from any, anybody. Any race. So mm-hmm. just bear that in mind with mm-hmm. your top-ups <laughs> um yeah i do agree with the whole thing about regardless of religion if you, if it permits you then you know give uh, give blood because mm. and your organs as well because what people don't realize is if their family member dies mm-hmm. where are they going to get the organ from yeah. you could save your child you could save your mom your dad yeah. and you know you need to kind of just Not relinquish that yeah. organ if it's mm. healthy give it away yeah, yeah. um I am totally for organ donation or for blood donation. However, I do think that the NHS got some responsibility in trying to make the process easier for black people because they mm. make a big deal about the fact that black people, um, we need your organs, we need blood, you know, bone marrow, such and such. But they make it hard. There are barriers to entry in such a way because I've tried to donate blood so many times and every time I get told that if I want to, me and my husband need to come in together because he was born in Africa, so we need to come in together, we need to prove that he, either, neither of us have got HIV oh, and wow. all this stuff. And I'm like, but if, 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 if Sally down the way decided to go and bang six men and catch HIV, you wouldn't ask enough, you just take her blood. Oh, yeah. But because he was born in Africa yeah. and because I'm married to him, yeah, they, I, I need to come in together. There are some restrictions on who can give yeah. blood, right? But because yeah. he was born in West Africa, even country. though he's, he's lived here, he's British, useful. everything, even, he, we need to go together if you yeah. want to donate blood and that's like we well, can't you, you've we made can't. that good that really good point regarding like sally banging 10 man and, and she can go, it. there's no problem mm, yeah. she can go and yeah. donate yeah. but yeah. we need I, to prove yeah. i think our attitudes need to sort of come up with the time because i think there was even a time when gay men couldn't give blood yeah. i don't know if that's yeah. changed yeah. no is that still the same i believe so yeah so there's, some it's, 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 there's still some restrictions and um, we're going to start wrapping up so i quickly just want to say just with the, the organ donation thing and religion mm-hmm. um i absolutely g- agree however i do think it's also important to respect people's religious mm-hmm. yeah. beliefs um some of us some people that are very religious whether you're christian muslim or whatever um that is their belief and it's very important to them so i think it's just important just to respect people's beliefs yeah, when it comes to stuff absolutely. like that because i can i can understand it like if you believe that mm-hmm. your body needs to be 
whole and return to the earth mm. that, that's their choice so ultimately I think in regards to everything that we've covered I think the basis of making an informed decision is just your own personal research just research as much as you can mm. go through books you know whatever whatever form of method you want to go that but I think it's important to just sit and research like make sure you do that so like you said when you have these views or opinions, you know exactly where your standpoint comes from. Absolutely. I think yeah, be careful key. with journals and articles. Uh, yeah, but I think it's no, key, like you said, and ultimately just respect how, everybody, how everyone feels. Yeah. Just respect Absolutely. Yeah, respect is key, I feel like, when it comes to everything we spoke about today. Absolutely. Yeah, cool, mm-hmm. that's a nice way to end. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I think, for me, I like having these kind of conversations mm-hmm. because there's things that affect us all the time and mm-hmm. it's nice to kind of have it, you know, how it affects us personally as black women black I think that's, that's there, important yeah. and most especially for our kids but ultimately like you said it's just about making that informed choice mm. and respecting the choices of others and understanding and just having open and honest dialogue yeah. um, but also speak to your GP mm-hmm. I know that seems like a really simple thing to do but and, and sometimes some people see you know various GPs you might have five that you see yeah, you don't always see the right yeah. one but even then I think it's important that you speak to them if you mm-hmm. are like unsure about something then just speak about it because I think it's better for you to ask the question rather than not and then sort of like sit in your ignorance and then make the wrong choice. Um, So yeah, hopefully you guys watching at home continue having the discussion. Let us know your comments in the comment section below. Have you vaccinated your kids? Uh, Would you not vaccinate your kids? Let us know the reasons why and continue the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag BlackCanvasTV and we will see you guys in another episode. Take care. Bye.